Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome back to That Time on Murder, She Wrote, where we riff, discuss, and yell about everything Murder, She Wrote. Today's episode does not come from a suggestion, but instead a list of the funniest episodes of the show. I considered taking one from a best of article, but not surprisingly, the episodes listed on those are often found on the worst of articles. Us Murder, She Wrote fans are a fickle people. Today, we're looking at a very good year for murder from season four. I was drawn to this episode because it features the legendary Eli Wallach, incredible fashion from the late 80s, and Billy Zane! Pre-Titanic Billy Zane. Surely this role on Murder, She Wrote is what shot him into the big time. And yes, I will be calling him Billy Zane for this whole episode because I can't see him as anything other than Billy Zane. Feel free to make this into a drinking game. Marco, played by John Saxon, is showing Jessica around his father's vineyard, which has been in the Gambini family for decades. What do you think? I'd say that you are very proud of him, Marco. Wow, what an indirect burn of a compliment. Way to dodge the question, Jess. John Saxon is a very prolific actor, known for portraying detective characters, so this feature is fitting for him. The movie I know him most for is A Nightmare on Elm Street, where he played Lieutenant Donald Thompson. He's not a detective in this episode, however, just some dude. Wait a minute, his grapes look weird. Oh, they are very fake. Straight up entire clusters of grapes just strewn about. <laughs> Wonderful. They discuss his father's upcoming birthday celebration. You know, it's hard to believe that he's going to be 75 tomorrow. It's hard to believe someone dressed you in this outfit, Angela. What exactly is the point of this vest? Marco and his huge Italian family plan a grand feast for the patriarch's birthday. Music, drinking, dancing. You're gonna dance too tomorrow, Jessica. Oh, you haven't lived until you've seen the moves of J.B. Fletcher. Oh my god, J.B. Fletcher. They ride horses back to the house and we meet Marco's son, Paul, who wants to play professional football. Next time you tackle some running back, just remember who you have to thank. Obama? Uh-oh, douchebag alert. Hey, Tony! <laughs> <laughs> it's Billy Zane! He's here! Look at him in all his insane Billy Zane glory. Billy Zane plays Tony, Marco's other son, who seems to have come into some money considering his new wheels. Though through a meeting with his mom, we learn he probably made his money gambling. Horses, the crap table, what a waste. My brother's got more brains than all of us put together. Jessica goes to spend some time with the birthday boy himself, Salvatore Gambini, who I presume is a friend of hers? The episode never really discloses how the family knows Jess, so I'm assuming she's a longtime family friend. Salvatore is played by Eli Wallach, who's been in too many films to list here, but my favorite is his role in The Holiday. I know, sappy rom-com, but trust me. Give it a watch, he is amazing in this film. They talk about his vineyards and how he'd love for his children to take over his winery someday, though he thinks they don't really care and is a little salty about it. So, you single? Jess expresses that she is concerned about Salvatore to his daughter, Stella, saying he's not looking his best. She explains that he's under pressure to sell the winery to some big wig tycoons, which is causing him stress. Do you know what kind of people we're talking about here? Men in fancy suits who make screwdrivers and shaving cream. Like, the drink? Or are these mafia types sitting around actually crafting screwdrivers? We're also introduced to Sal's granddaughter, Michelle, and her new beau, Ben. You can tell they're a couple because they have matching feathered hair. Paul, nice to meet you. Hello, Paul, I'm Ben. This is my mullet. Oh my god! Oh, sorry, false alarm. I thought Michelle was being eaten alive by her sleeves. At dinner, an argument breaks out about money and family drama, and Jess is like, fuck my life. Marco tames it by giving his father a lovely toast. Then this music pops in, and Sal gives a short speech, and it feels ominous. I'm grateful to God for giving me a strong and loving son. Sit, sit, sit. <laughs> is this the Godfather? Is someone going to die? Wait. Early the next morning, Billy Zane informs his grandpa that he needs to leave for a bit to see a guy in Tahoe. I got, it's business. I gotta see this guy. Which in Italian translates to, I'm in some big shit. He says he'll be back in time for the party. Before he goes, Salvatore asks him to grab some wine from the cellar for Jessica and gives him the key. Oh my god, Billy Zane! This scene actually caught me off guard when I first watched it. His fall felt so abrupt and jarring. One second he's fine and then... So... this guy is dead? Nope, false alarm, just a bruise on the head. Jess, of course, immediately assumes foul play. She looks at the broken step and sees that it has been sawed through and that it was likely meant to take out Salvatore. Meanwhile, despite his father protesting, Billy Zane leaves for Tahoe. If I don't show, it could be very bad for me. 
and that's all you need to know, okay? Give this man an Oscar already. Time to party it up at the Gambini place. Aw, oh, yeah, looks hoppin'. Look at these people. They are into it. Jess takes this opportunity to get to know Michelle's boyfriend, asking him if he'd like to dance. When it comes to dancing, I'm all thumbs. I need you all to know that I laughed for a solid five minutes at that sentence. In the most bland oatmeal-like tone, Ben tells her he grew up on a farm and is writing a book about gold mines. How nice. Meanwhile, everyone drinks the Gambini wine. And when I say wine, I mean cranberry juice. Look how red it is. Oh, well, it's cranberry juice, cran apple. We also meet another character named Thaddeus Kyle, a friend of Sal's. He's also the local police chief, and he's attending the party to watch for any suspicious people who may have it out for his friend. Having heard of her reputation, he asks her if she has any idea of who could be responsible for the broken board. Mrs. Fletcher, you have quite a reputation as an amateur crime solver. I'm afraid that's greatly exaggerated. <laughs> Is it? Well, I heard Sal turned down a real good offer to sell. Could be somebody ran out of patience. I feel like I need to listen to this guy on at least 1.5 times the speed. So... This guy is dead? Billy Zane? Wait, no. Who is this? While Jess and Sal are going down to the cellar to pick out more wine, they find Ben Schuyler, Michelle's boyfriend. You know, this guy. I'm all thumbs. We find out that Michelle wasn't all that close to the victim. She met him when he was given a job where she works eight weeks prior. Jess decides to help Kyle investigate, and he's pleased because of all the good things he's heard about her. What is this face? Okay, calm down, Joker. A quick look through Ben's luggage suggests that he isn't who he said he was. You mean he's not writing a book about forgotten gold mines? Unbelievable. Time for some good old-fashioned JB snooping. Sal finds Jessica poking around, looking for clues. She inquires about Michelle's boyfriends and if she had ever mentioned Ben, to which Sal replies, why would she? She has a new boyfriend every month. They're all the same. They're all writing books about gold mines? Oh hey, Billy Zane is back. Anyway, the coroner's report says that Ben had been poisoned. Oh, and that he was also a hired killer sent by the mob. Just a small detail. Now the question is, why was he after Sal, and who hired him? For some reason, a new character is thrown into the mix, which is weird, because we're pretty late in the game now. He starts sizing up the house like it's a yummy sandwich. More family drama ensues between Marco, Sal, and Billy Zane in regards to the latter's gambling and money issues. I tried to pay attention to the conversation, but kept getting distracted by this teeny tiny table and chair set. It's so cute. Turns out Billy Zane keeps losing all of his money and needing it for loan sharks. I'm sorry. I have never seen anyone look this smug while apologizing. So basically, everyone is shady. Paul is acting shifty, Sal is acting shifty, Billy Zane is acting shifty, this guy is acting shifty, and he's barely in the episode. Sal is actually furious that Jess told the police chief about the company wanting to buy his winery, and in a very out-of-character way, tells her to just leave, feeling like she's getting in over her head. Now that so-called accident was obviously aimed at you. You got a reservation on a plane back east? Use it. Jeez, brutal coming from such a lifelong friend. This guy is revealed to be an investigator for the football commissioner. It seems that Paul here was involved in some sports gambling, and he was afraid the killer was after him. But then, Jess has her epiphany. She meets Sal in the wine cellar to discuss her theory. That hired killer was after you. You see, Sal found out that Ben was a hitman and that he was the target. Now this is going to get absolutely bonkers, but stay with me. You see, when Michelle told Sal she was bringing her bow, Sal looked him up and discovered his background. But if you knew, why did you let him come? To kill him? No. The other way around. I'm sorry, what? Sal tells Jess that his health is deteriorating. He only has a few months left. It turns out he invited the hitman so he would be killed and he would leave a letter behind for his family because it would make them so angry they would pull together and save the winery. Unfortunately, Billy Zane almost got killed instead of Sal. <coughs> this pissed him off, so Sal just figured he'd take him out before anyone else got hurt. Yes, you heard all of this right. Sal wanted someone to murder him so the family would care about the winery and his legacy. I, I just there had to be a better way to go about this. I hear talking it out has a great success rate. I thought the episode was going to conclude here, but no. Salvatore is so utterly unhinged that he starts drinking the poisoned wine he used to kill Ben right in front of Jess. Come here, quickly! No, it's better this way. Help me, Paul! Why is this happening? This is insane. How is this the end of the episode? Whatever happens, we're going to fight to keep the winery. What? It worked? 
No, that isn't right. He could have just told them he was dying of health problems. Wouldn't they have pulled together then? What even is this? Fortunately, Sal makes a recovery. You know, there isn't any real evidence that Salvatore killed that man. Oh, it's one of these episodes. Yep, since Sal killed the hitman, they just kind of let it go. What a happy ending. Well... That was weird. To be honest, this was a pretty decent episode with a lot of fun characters, and then it went and did this at the end. I must say, for finding this under a thread titled The Funniest Episode of Murder, She Wrote, I'm not sure I found it all that funny, except for this. I'm all thumbs. Maybe they meant funny as in peculiar. Like, there's something funny about this episode of Murder, She Wrote. But I digress. I like this episode a lot, and is it mostly because of Eli Wallach and Billy Zane? Yes. Is it also because Jessica figures out the crime like a total boss? Yes. Is it also because of this completely insane ending where everything just goes off the rails? Absolutely. I have no idea why the script went so bonkers, but I'm here for it and it has my recommendation. I can only assume this episode was just ramping up for the absolutely crazy episodes that continue on in season 5. That's when things get really campy in my opinion. If you have a suggestion for a weird episode of Murder, She Wrote that you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments and it might just make it to the channel. If you've seen this episode, please, please tell me what you thought about the ending. I look forward to seeing your recommendations and until next Next time, happy sleuthing. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching my video on A Good Year for Murder, featuring a lot of weird Italian accents. If you want to see more from me, I have plenty on this channel, but first, a huge shout out to my patrons, for if not for them, I'd probably be doing something else entirely, and you'd miss out on all these Murder, She Wrote videos. If you want to support me, please consider donating, and if not, likes and shares are my jam. If you want to see more videos from me, here are some recommendations. On the left, you will find the last episode of That Time on Murder, She Wrote, and on the right is a review of a cozy little game called Called strange horticulture. No matter what you choose to watch, it will be cozy, trust me. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.